Again, hi everyone, and thank you for joining the CDLS Foundation's Rare Disease Day webinar. Learn about the CDLS Healthcare Notebook. I'm Gabrielle Nadu, the Communications Director, and your presenter is Linda Pierce, Program Director for the CDLS, excuse me, for Family Service. I want to review a few housekeeping items before we begin. Again, the webinar is being recorded. Participants will be muted during the presentation to reduce any background noises. During the webinar, if you have any questions, please put them in the chat box and Linda will answer as many as possible at the end. If we happen to run out of time, please email your questions to family services team at cdlsusa.org. I'll be sure to put that email address in the chat box momentarily. Also, we would love if you could change your name to whoever is participating in the webinar today. So how you do this is if you scroll to the bottom of your screen and screen in the Zoom box that you're seeing, you'll see a participant icon. Click on that and that will pop up and you can hover over your name. And if your name is already set up with your first and last name, that's totally fine. But if not, if you can click on the three dots that appear next to your name and then click on the rename button and then just type in your name. That'll help us know who's here and just keep it all set and good for us here at the foundation. Thank you so much. And I will turn it now over to Linda. Enjoy the presentation. Thank you. Um, hi everyone, my name is Linda Pierce. I am the program director for family services here at the CDLS Foundation. Thank you so much for attending today. We're very excited about this webinar. We're really happy that registration happened so quickly. Um, the presentation and the webinar and the healthcare notebook will be available on the CDLS website shortly after the presentation. Um, we also hope that you'll register for the second webinar in the series, which is April 11th on understanding the healthcare system. But for today, we really hope you find this helpful and um, we're happy to have you. The healthcare notebook does have um, this icon on here with the two figures putting the puzzle pieces together because that really is what the healthcare notebook is. It's a piece of the puzzle or it's a tool that you can use to keep the pieces of your puzzle together. So what is a healthcare notebook? Well, a healthcare notebook is a very personalized organizational tool. It gives you a central place to keep information that is some resource and some reminders and suggestions for you. It gives you a centralized place to keep important information about your household and important information about your family member with CDLS. Um, it is personalized because you're going to fill out information on there that is specific to your household and your family member with CDLS. And it is flexible. It can be used in electronic or print format or a combination of both, which may work best for a lot of people. So why should I have a healthcare notebook? Well, mostly because it's stressful to find just what you want just when you need it. It can take, it can seem like a full-time job keeping track of everything. Test results, school information, healthcare information, suppliers, medications. And we also get a lot of information from a lot of different sources. So we really want to be able to get our hands on that information as when we need it. And you need an easy way to share certain information with specific people because you don't wanna share everything with everyone, but there's certain pieces of information that are very important that you might just wanna share with specific people. And we certainly all benefit from resources and reminders that help us navigate a confusing system or help us advocate in a medical setting. So how to get started? Well, the first way to get started is to gather all the information that you have. All the information that you have about your care team in different folders, on your refrigerator, um, different scraps of paper, that piece of paper that you brought from the doctor's office that's in the bottom of your purse, gather all that stuff together. The other thing that you'll need is this healthcare notebook works from Adobe Reader, that's the platform. So if you don't have it already, 
you'll need to download the free version of Adobe onto your computer. And we have put the website here that you can download it from. Um, and when you go there, it will ask you if you want to pay for the premium version, you do not need to. This works fine off of the free version. And for mobile devices, if you want it on your phone, um, you can locate Adobe Acrobat Reader at on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Then in order to create a folder, because you really want to save your healthcare notebook in a place that you can get to it. I don't know how you are, but for me, there's often times that I save really important things in very special places, and I'm really not sure where they are. So this creates a home for your healthcare notebook. So how to do that is open um, a, a browser that you go to or a folder that you, a drive that you save your information to, click on the arrow, that will bring up the new folder, right click on where it says new folder and you name it. I named mine healthcare notebook because I'm fancy like that, but now my healthcare notebook has a home. Then you're gonna to go to our website to download the healthcare notebook and it will be on cdlsusa.org backslash healthcare. And for all of you people that like to browse ahead, it will not be live till after the webinar. But when you go on that part of the website, you'll see navigating healthcare systems. And this is a new section of the website that we will be adding things to over time. So we will be adding information from this webinar, from the April 11th webinar, different other pieces of information that we create. We are creating this system or this um, section of the website that talks about navigating healthcare systems. So you are going to download it, you press the green button, and then this will show up um, on your computer and you'll see the little button here to download. And then it will go into the folder that you created. And for any of you who are fancy Mac users, it will download to your download folder and then you can move it to your healthcare notebook folder. So now you have the healthcare notebook in a place on your computer, on a drive that you can find, and it has a home. And that's a good thing. So what is inside the healthcare notebook? Well, there's a big table of contents and the healthcare notebook is comprised of certain resource material. These are reminders, um, resources, different pieces of information to read and review. And then there are forms inside that you fill out that are make it personalized. Those forms are about you and your household and your family member with CDLS. You can also notice all the different color icons next to the pages, and it is separated out into different sections, whether it's general information, things that are resources, emergency information, things for a hospital, additional resources. It is color coded into different sections. A pro tip as we found from playing with it is fill out the forms on the largest screen you have and then move the healthcare notebook to documents on your phone if you wanna keep it on your phone. And now um, I am going to bear with me for a minute and we can see the whole healthcare notebook. And here we go. So this is the cover and the table of contents that you've seen. These early pages really are talk about the things that we have just gone over about how to set it up and how it can help you. And now we're going to go to the parts that are fillable, that are specific to your family member with CDLS and your family. So this is the good part. And this is February. So in honor of President's Day and Abe Lincoln's birthday, I have filled out some of this about our 16th president, Abraham Lincoln. So some of this form is like a million other forms you filled out. So we have Abe Lincoln, we have, he has a nickname, Honest Abe. He lived with his parents, Nancy and Thomas. 
He also had a sister, Sarah, that was his favorite person. But a lot of forms that you fill out at doctor's offices or schools don't have information that helps people engage with your family member with CDLS. It doesn't tell them a lot about how they react or how to work with them most successfully, especially in an unfamiliar setting like a new school or a new doctor or a stressful situation like the emergency room. So on here, you will see not only sort of information about contacts, but also how I react to things. What happens when they're sad? What happens when your family member with CDLS is nervous or scared? Or how they react if they're angry or frustrated? And especially what helps calm your family member with CDLS or improve their mood? Now, Abraham Lincoln loved animals. He had cats and dogs. So if you were gonna talk to him about something, you might wanna bring them up. His cats were Tabby and Dixie and his dogs were Fido and Jip. Um, and really what helped calm him or improve his mood because he was an animal lover was pardoning the Thanksgiving Day turkey. Um, we also have what is your family member's favorite things? And these are all things that would help a new teacher, a new provider, the school nurse, anyone help engage with your family member with CDLS especially if they're nonverbal or their um, speech is limited where they're really not able to express those things well. We've also included independence ratings so that you can document what things, what activities during life your family member with CDLS does by themselves, what they do with assistance and what they're really not able to participate in at all. And we know that some of these things really are goals that you're gonna work on. So for example, tell a doctor or nurse what's wrong. Maybe right now my child can't do that. But as I'm helping my child to prepare to move from a pediatric medical setting to an adult setting, that's something I really wanna work on. So it may start here where I'm gonna put the X and as I work on that, you know what, now with some prompting or verbal cueing, now they can really tell the doctor or nurse in the office what's wrong as long as I'm helping. And then at some point, yes, oh, we're gonna be independent in that, I can switch that. So the forms are fillable and they're easy to update and we would urge you always to keep it current and updated with as many things as, that change as possible. So it's as useful as possible. We also have in this kind of general information, all the medical supports that are needed and all the different provider types that you regularly see. And again, these check boxes can be checked or unchecked as needed. There we go. Now we're gonna move into these pages that are red and you can see that there's an ambulance here because this is good emergency contact information. Um, a lot of it is typical information, name, date of birth. Um, we have written in CDLS as a diagnosis, but there's also room to add other diagnoses. Um, Abe Lincoln did have malaria. Um, he also had mercury poisoning, which was a side effect of a medication that he took over a long period of time. Um, in the previous information about Abraham Lincoln, it was suspected that he had Marfan syndrome. Um, now, apparently the thought is that he did not, but rather he had multiple endocrine neoplasia type 2B. I'm not really sure what that is, but apparently that is the working theory now. I did take the liberty of assigning him a gene change and my blood type because I'm not really sure what his was. We have a section on allergies. Um, and not only to medications, but environmental allergies like bee stings, um, if you have an EpiPen or a medic alert tag. Also latex precautions, because that's in the gloves in the hospitals a lot of times. So that's a really important thing to make sure that is noted early on. We also have emergency contacts, your preferred hospital, primary care provider, because everyone should have a primary care provider. Abraham Lincoln's primary care provider I put was Charles Leal. And if you see the email, it's first doc at the theater. 
And that was because he was the first doctor that attended to Abraham Lincoln when he was shot at Ford's Theater. So there he is. I don't know anyone who only cares for one person. I really don't. So emergency contacts for the other children or other family members that you also have to care for is very important to keep track of. So if you're in the emergency room with one child who is maybe taking care of siblings, or if you take care of another family member at your house who also needs transportation or care or supervision, it's all about documenting your whole network. We also want to keep track of medical insurance because especially in this red section, if you're going to the emergency room, they're gonna ask you for your insurance information. So we gave Abraham Lincoln Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Illinois and also um, Health Choice Illinois as secondary because that is Illinois Medicaid. We also have a place where you can upload pictures of your insurance card. So this is the back of the insurance card. And for the front of the card, you simply press here and then it will tell you to browse because you'll need a picture of your insurance card saved somewhere. And then we're gonna go up to the folder where it is. And then I hit okay. And this is Thomas Lincoln on the front of his insurance card. If your insurance changes in January because your employer offered a different plan or you changed your insurance, um, you would want to clear this by just saying clear image and then go ahead and upload an, up, um, an updated picture of the card. So now we are changing sections. Now it's turning to orange, and this is for pharmacy information. I would though, even though this is a section you would use in a variety of settings, I would always encourage people to have their pharmacy and medication information with them whenever you go to the emergency room or to a doctor's office. Your list of medications is always really important. So here we have a local pharmacy where you would go. Also, some people on their insurance card, many people will have a pharmacy number on the back of the card because your insurance company has a pharmacy benefits manager or a number where a provider will need to call if a certain medication requires prior approval. So it's not a bad idea to add that phone number as well. If, you're, if you get your pharmaceuticals pre-pour or your pharmacy delivers, that's great. For those of you who need compound medicines and need a specialty pharmacy for that, you can document that here. We also have a great medication list. And I would urge you always to put not only prescription medicines, but supplements, vitamins, anything over the counter also in your medication list, because different things will interact with prescription medicines very differently. And here we put in Abraham Lincoln did take these blue mass pills, which apparently were very prevalent and common in that day for a variety of disorders or diagnoses or things people thought people had. So it was prescribed by Dr. Sadness and Abe Lincoln took them three times a day, morning, noon, and night by mouth. And if you go over here to how is it taken, this is a drop down. So you can select if something is taken by mouth or mixed with food through it by tube, suppository, injection, port catheter or IV. Unfortunately for Abe Lincoln, these blue mass pills are what gave him mercury poisoning. So they are no longer available and he stopped taking them. So that's good. However, he also took Jesuit bark and I'm not sure what that is, but it was the treatment for malaria in the 1850s. So he took that twice a day. I'm not sure how you take it, but I selected mix with food because it's bark and I didn't think you would just take that by mouth. But you do have a lot of different lines here to fill out your medication list and always keep it up to date and select the route by which you take it and how often it is taken. And again, whenever anything changes, you can just 
um, delete that and change it to another option to make it accurate. For many of you, or at least for some of you, you have a family member with CDLS who requires maybe more frequent ER visits or hospitalizations. And if that is you, we would recommend you considering having a go bag that is ready and with you all the time, like keep it in your car. Um, for those of you who have given birth, it's kind of like the bag that they suggest that you keep you know, before delivery. Among the things that we suggest you put in your go bag, um, in addition to things that make you more comfortable, like a change of clothes and a bunch of chapstick, um, be sure to bring a phone charger with an extra long cord. I'm really not sure what it is about hospital rooms, but it seems like wherever you are, the outlet is in the least convenient place and the place furthest for where you need it. Um, certainly paper copies of important medical and legal forms. If there's guardianship paper or a power of attorney, advanced directives, all of that stuff you want a copy of, certainly you know you're going to have to take notes. So I, you know, pens, a notebook, and some of the printed pages from this healthcare notebook, like that important contact information that we just went through, the medication list you might want to bring. Um, we have some blank hospital note forms later on in the notebook, and you may want to print them and put them in that notebook to fill out by hand during a hospital stay, unless you want to do it sort of fill them out on maybe a tablet in the hospital room, but all of those things are, are good. We know that even if you have a go bag and even if you're prepared, that navigating in a hospital stay or advocating in a hospital stay is always tough. And so we have included some resources, some reminders, and some suggestions on how to advocate during a hospital stay. And it really does boil down to everyone has a right to understand what is happening. Everyone has a right to get their questions answered. Everyone has a right to use all the resources of the hospital. And everyone has a right to know that discharge planning begins the day of admission so you, there can be a safe discharge from the hospital. And so some of these all speak to that. If English is not your primary language, ask the hospital for an interpreter. They have to provide it for you and it has to be free. You do not have to use a family member. That is a requirement. If the care is complex, ask if the hospital has a complex care team or a palliative care team, and then ask, how do I get them involved? If you want a second opinion, ask, how do I get a second opinion here? That is also your right. You certainly have a right to request a patient care conference as soon as possible because discharge planning starts the day of admission. So you really want these things. And then certainly you wanna ask questions until you understand the answers. And that is difficult and we know that. So here, what we have done is given you some recommendations, some suggestions of questions to ask um, that go along with common situations that happen into in the hospital. So if it's a new condition, when tests or treatments are recommended, when there's a new medication that's recommended, these are all some sample questions that help you get that conversation started and help you to get the answers that you need to proceed. And discharge planning is so important that that is kind of its own page because we do have, you, you really want to know early on, what do I have to learn before my family member with CDLS is discharged? And when are you gonna teach me this? It should not be on the way out the hospital. And do I need home care? And do I need a follow-up appointment? Are you gonna help me set that up? Who do I follow up with? How soon should that follow-up be? Um, all of these things, how am I getting my family member with CDLS home if I can't transport them in my car? So all of these questions really need to be ironed out and 
it is not to be ironed out on the way out the door, which is why we really do suggest that you ask for a patient care conference early on so that any supplies, any equipment, any appointments you need are set up before you leave. And that is a challenge. I don't misunderstand me. It's not easy, but you can push for it, but you'll have to push for it. Also, when things don't go as planned in the hospital, every hospital does have a procedure for complaints. They either have a patient advocate or a quality assurance department or a risk management department. It is called different things in different facilities. You can ask to, to meet with them in person is best. You can write a letter if you can't. If the provider or if that hospital is in your insurance company's network, every insurance company does have a complaint or grievance process. And so you can also make that complaint with your health plan and ask them to investigate what happened. If your family member has Medicare, there is a separate procedure for Medicare. Each state has a Medicare quality improvement organization. And this link here, these are live links within the healthcare notebook, will take you to how you can find what is the quality improvement organization in your state. Hospital visit notes. These are a really nice little format. Like I said, you could print these and just have them in your go bag and fill them out by hand, or you could fill them out on a tablet or something in the hospital. But you're just going to put the date and time and who you talk to. Here it is 7 a.m. So the residents were rounding. I talked to the chief resident. Here's what was discussed. The endoscopy went okay. We started antibiotics. My next steps are I'm still awaiting the biopsy from the endoscopy. They promised me or they told me the results should be available Thursday. And this is what they're considering, Botox to relax stomach muscles moving on, but they're not really sure about it. So at least I have this in my possession and helps me remind, you know, as a reminder. And these you can print out as much as you want. Um, or ask for extras, we can, you know, provide these for you. As always, now the color has changed a little bit from the hospital setting here to doctor's offices, where we're gonna keep track of all of our providers, primary care, urgent care, um, or after hours. Perhaps your insurance company has a 24 seven nurse advice line um, or your provider's office has a nurse advice line, that would be a good number to have. Um, if there's an app or um, a website that you can access to get to urgent care, um, you can fill that in. A dentist, different specialists. Um, here's my orthopedist at Shriners in Chicago. We kept the Illinois theme for Abraham Lincoln. Um, also GI, whatever specialists you need and their contact information including rehab medicine, PT, OT, speech, or physiatry, and behavioral health. And my suggestion here for behavioral health is not only is it a good idea to document your regular behavioral health providers, but also if there's an mo um, emergency mobile crisis in your area, um, it would be a good place to keep that information as well. Home care agencies, Transportation, if you have Medicaid, you automatically have coverage for non-emergency medical transportation to appointments. So you would want to know the vendor in your area for that. Um, if you don't have that, but you do have a transportation vendor for school, um, you would want to keep that information as well as what is the mode of transportation, whether it's a wheelchair, van, or taxi, or school bus. Medical equipment and supplies. And this is something I feel like some families need a ton of and some families don't need at all. So this form works a little bit differently than the others. The idea is that each item you can add across the top, but you can 
combine them if you get those items from one singular vendor. Because what you really want to do is keep track of who do I get what from? Do I own it? Do I rent it? Is it rent to own? Am I on a delivery schedule? Who do I call when it doesn't show up on time? Or they send me the wrong size tubes? Where do I call for any of that? So here for the G-tube, if all of your equipment, including the tubing and the syringes and the gauze and the gels, sachet things come from one vendor, I can add all of these things in this one column and put in, I get them all from DME Supply USA. Here's their phone number. It is owned. I get my supplies once a month. And yes, my insurance company does have to give prior authorization or prior approval for this. If I get some of this, this equipment or supplies from a different vendor, I'm really going to want to put that piece of equipment or supply in a different box across the top so I can have all the information and contact information for that supply or that piece of equipment. So if I get my feeding bag and the extension set from Linkcare, even though all this other stuff comes from DME Supply USA, I would put all of their information here. Sometimes the phone number and also maybe the fax number if I need to tell my provider to fax over additional orders. And there are extra blank copies of this at the end of the healthcare notebook for those families that really need to keep track of more. There is information about school. A lot of this is the same stuff you fill out for every other kind of school form. Um, you do want to make sure that you know if the nurse is going to give medications or treatments or if the child is able to self-administer. Also, as an additional resource, um, each school district and sometimes in the state, there is a special education coordinator or a special education director. And if you're feeling like you're not getting all of the services that are in your child's IEP, or perhaps you think other services should have been added to your child's IEP and they're not, um, you wanna know what the chain, chain of command is to um, go higher up and get your questions answered. In Connecticut, we not only have special education coordinators in the districts, we also have a state office for that. And Brian Klemkowitz is actually the special education coordinator for the state of Connecticut, all of the um, schools here. And I did put in, you know, first student is the transportation company. Another great resource is every state does have a parent information training or a parent community resource center. And these links are live and you can click on them and it will take you to the parent resource center in your state, which is a wonderful place to go for information. They will help you advocate with the school district. They have resources, they have um, advocates. A lot of them will also, like in Connecticut, there are groups. Um, it is a really good resource to check out for local resources. We also want you to think of recreation and leisure because even though it comes last for a lot of people because there's so many tasks to do, it really shouldn't. So this website I love because this helps people find the closest accessible playground and you can click on that and find an accessible playground near you. So there is a place where everyone can play. Um, there are also adaptive sports programs in your area. You can check out your town park and rec or the YMCA local to you, um, and also summer camp options. So there is this website of very special camps where you can find something that might meet your needs in your area as well. And then, we're almost done, we have family supports because it's never just about the person with CDLS, it really is about the whole family. And so your family supports include the CDLS Foundation, um, we are here Monday through Friday. We're happy to talk with you. There's a ton of information on our website. We also have an email directly to the family service team at family services team at cdlsusa.org. 
and a 1-800 phone number, and we're happy to assist you in any way that we can. Support group information, religious organizations that you work with that help, that provide you help and support are all important to be um, documented so you can find those numbers when you need them. This website is also great because each state has an, a lead agency for those with developmental disabilities. And you can find yours here. And this will really tell you what is available in your state for different situations. So we would urge you to look at that. Um, behavioral health counseling, always a good idea when things are difficult. We also have a great relationship with the sibling support um, organization for your siblings of those with CDLS. They have wonderful information on their website. They have resources, they have suggested literature, they have articles. They also have schedules for their sib shops, which are held across the country in different places, some in person and some still virtual. Um, and they are recreational, but also helpful for kids who are siblings of those with CDLS to meet other siblings of children that have special needs and find those common denominators with other children. For older siblings, they also have a sibling leadership network and it can be a really nice support for your entire family. And of course, there's things I'm sure that you have that we haven't thought of, so we have lines for other. And for folks who like to keep track of their upcoming medical appointments, we have the provider, the appointment name, appointment time, and certainly the questions that you want to ask, because it's really easy to forget. And then when you're in the car on the way home, if you're like me, you're like, oh, I meant to ask, whatever. So it's really nice to have the questions that you want to ask at an upcoming appointment written down. We also have a place to keep track of any ER visits, procedures, surgeries, inpatient stays, whatever you would like to um, keep track of, particularly if this is an ongoing issue and you wanna keep track of all the different things that have happened. And then we have other resources for information for planning when your child turns 18 and in many states and all states really without any other documentation, the state considers your 18 year old to be an adult. And so there are certain things that have to happen if your child at 18 really still needs support making medical or behavioral health decisions and decisions about their residence or education or vocational choices. And so we do give you some local information. We also suggest that you give us a call if you need more resources or email us. Um, and also to review, we have the Navigating Health Transitions, Pediatric to Adult Medical Care. We do have a book that we are happy to send out to you if you request it, and you can just email us here. Same email as always, family services team at cdlsusa.org to request a copy. And there are also other websites here as well for different resources and additional resources. We have CDLS growth charts that are specific to CDLS. And I know um, I have, we have certainly sent these out to various parents to share with your primary care provider that they should not be um, monitoring your child against a growth chart that is appropriate for um, typically developing children, but there is a CDLS specific growth chart for both boys and girls. Um, we also have Medical Alert and a place in the website that does talk about critical care. And one of the portions of that is also about the Ask the Expert process, which is a way in which if you have questions and you contact us at the CDLS Foundation, either we can provide that information for you or if we can't, or your provider wants to speak with an expert, we do have really wonderful access to our clinical advisory board, which are physicians with great expertise in multiple fields and in CDLS who are always willing to provide their insights 
but they're also always willing to speak with your provider if your provider is willing to speak with them and work together on a good plan of care. And now I think we're gonna just go back for a minute if I can figure this out. And we are going to go here. So the last question really is how can I best use this notebook? And it really is to treat it as a one-stop shopping for essential information. Also add additional information about CDLS to the folder where you keep your um, healthcare notebook. So we do have this wonderful new gene brochure. We have a great um, dear provider letter that explains that ask the expert program and process if they would like to speak with one of the clinical advisory board members or if you have a question for them. And there's also this nice little ask the expert card and both of these are very new. And if you want, contact us for copies and we can either mail it out to you or send them to you electronically, however you choose to um, want them. Keep copies of your important legal documents, um, update your notebook. And also this is our first venture into a healthcare notebook. So we really hope that you will use it and share your ideas to improve the healthcare notebook with us because um, we will be reviewing it annually and we would want to make changes based on your feedback so that it works better for you. And that's a lot of talking for me, but we do, I would like to take some questions and for questions after the webinar, here we have again, the family service team email or phone number. And here's also the link to download the healthcare notebook. But now we will go, oops, I'm sorry to, Sorry about that. To the questions. Thank you, Linda. That was wonderful. Um, you can just stop sharing your screen if you would like. That would be great. Yep. <laughs> that would be great. Okay. Perfect. That was great. So we have a few questions great. Um, that I am going to just start. Um, asking. So the first question we had was, will this be, is this available in Spanish or other languages? It is not right now, but, um, you know, we would love it to be. And that is always near and dear to my heart to get everything in Spanish, as Gab Gabby will tell you. But yeah, it, we are just coming out with this, but the intent is yes, to have it translated as well. Um, can we Thanks, share <laughs> Can we share this with other people who, who have a child with a different special need? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it is going to be free on the website. I feel like it is very um, flexible. It can be used for anyone. Um, it can be used for a child with other special needs. It can be used if you're taking care of someone in your family that is an adult. It, yes, 100% yes. Thank you. If I have difficulty downloading the documents, who should I reach out to? Gabby. Oh, <laughs> um, I would say, um, yeah, send us an email in between the two of us or some of our colleagues will figure it out for you. Um, we did try it on a variety of devices and it was pretty similar, including a Mac. So um, I would urge you to look at the directions, some on the PowerPoint, but yeah, I mean, I think we can help you, sure. If if I, oh, sorry, I'd like to leave a copy at my son's group home. Will hospital staff still review this if I'm not there at the same, at the time of admission? I sure hope so. And I know that there are parents that who have made it clear. I think part of it is whoever is with your family member with CDLS has got to be able to say, hey, the important stuff is right here. Look at this. It is a big notebook. Um, I On the floor, in a, if someone is admitted, make sure that the primary care nurse knows, look, check the notebook. Um, I would make it big and in a bright color and make sure it doesn't end up in the corner of the room you know, where like the blinds are and nobody looks, but you know, maybe on the tray or something close. But I think 
Yes, with a lot of prompting, you know. <laughs> Same with everything, right? <laughs> a yeah, lot of I think so. Yeah. Um, if I up, if I need to update information, should I overwrite on what I currently have, or should I save a new copy so I have historical information? Um. Yikes. I guess it it depends on what you're changing. I think if there are small changes and you're changing a dose of a medicine, I wouldn't start over or a new medicine. I would probably just take that out. Um, but if you really want history or you know the doctor is saying, we're gonna try this, and then if this doesn't work, we're gonna try this medicine. And then if this doesn't work, we're gonna try this. You may wanna keep that um, and maybe just take out or write in on that medication page that is DC'd you know, and add it. Um, I think at times you may want to rekey, but I would certainly urge people to rekey as little as possible and make those modifications as you can. I know you just went over this, Linda, but can you just again explain what additional information from the foundation or other resources should be helpful to have with the notebook? Um, I think you want to take some general information that also points you in the right direction for more specifics. So the new gene brochure that we have out gives a lot of good information, but it also says for more information, go here to another website. We have a dear provider letter that gives a little bit of information about CDLS, a little bit of information about um, the foundation and a little bit of information about if you have questions, here's the, the ask the expert. But there's always an avenue for if you have more, because you're not really going to be able to put in large publications. So those small things that we have that give you general information, but give you a place to go for more specifics, I think are super helpful. And this is the last question. Um, will this be available, the PowerPoint be available after the, the show? The, yes, the show. yes, yes, <laughs> after the show. Uh, yes, um, after a short commercial break. No, we will be, we will have it available um, shortly. The PowerPoint will be available. The recording will be available. That takes a little bit of time. Um, but then also the healthcare notebook will be available. All of it will be available. Um, together shortly. And then it also shortly again, just to reiterate, it will be on our homepage shortly. The, the healthcare notebook will be right on the homepage for download right on the teal bar um, shortly, either today, later today or early tomorrow. And um, we just have to make a couple changes to update it and it will be good to go. Um, and then we will send out a notification when the website or excuse me, the webinar is updated on our website for you to go in and see easy viewing to rewatch re and to have the PowerPoint access. Yeah, everything will be there except the Abe Lincoln trivia. So yeah, <laughs> you're on your own for that part. <laughs> well, I wanted to thank everybody for attending today. That concludes our first webinar of 2023. And thank you for attending on Rare Disease Day. Um, again, well, we have one of our special people with us. Thank you. Hi, Benjamin. Um, just say hi to him. We're, we're excited for you to be here today on Rare Disease Day, but we are happy all of you are here yeah. for our wonderful community. Um, so thank you so much for taking this time to spend with us on this day in February, the rarest um, day of the year, and we will see you soon. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye now.